Hey everybody, it's Jay from Bullshit Corner. Welcome to today's video. And this video is the final video of stripping down the Jeep engine. We're going to have a look at the head. It's not going to be a very long video. I feel like fucking ass. I'm a week away from leaving for Cuba and I'm getting sick. So this beer better fucking cure me before I go. Otherwise, I don't want to be fucking sick, sniveling like a little bitch on the beach, trying to drink rum and cola while everybody else is having fun. Oh yeah, beer fucking soothes the throat. Let's fucking do this. So not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this though, but this is the one with the push rod broke. And uh, the bolt is actually lifted out, so I was suspecting before that the valve might have been seized. That might not be the case now. Uh, I might have actually just been backing out enough that the uh, push rod was able to jump out of place and snap that way. I'm going to remove the rockers off this side because this is the cylinder we're going to deal with and uh, pop it out and have a look. Well I popped a rocker off, I flipped it around. This is the one that the push rod broke on. It doesn't look like there's any evidence of impact. It would have hit and damaged it there so I'm going to try my valve tool out and see if I can pop the spring out and drop the valve down below. I'm no expert at popping valves though, but uh, that seems to work for me so I can get that little ring out there and I can hopefully push the rod out the bottom. I've never used one of these tools before, so I'm not 100% sure. I'll Google it after. So these little pieces right here lock your valve in place. I'll get a better view of that in a second. There's the other one. We got that one popped out. Gonna drop the valve out. Let me get my tool off. Alright, if you look in this little cup where the valve sits, it's kind of beveled going in. And if you grab the valve, I put those pieces on it, and you can see those are kind of beveled. And it's what's that, it's what locks it in there. And you can tell by the valve, none of the valves were seized. I mean, this one here even looks pretty good as well. Um, I'm going to flip the head over so you can see. Alright, so there we go in there. That's basically how it looks inside the head with the chamber and then your valve, of course, would just slide in like that. Nothing too exciting to look at. Like I said, the engine sat outside for a while, but it was actually this rusty when I got it. And there's the rest of the scrap heap. And in case you haven't watched some of my other videos, um, Check them out. Did like a whole group of stripping it down. They had one. I didn't want to spend that, that much time on. I just want to see if a valve was seized and that's what caused it all, but it wasn't. So, so here's my attempt of trying to get one of the guides out. I'm not sure if they do come out or not, or if you just have to hone them out to make them bigger and put an oversized valve in. I'm not exactly sure. Somebody can chime in on that. I haven't researched into it. And I kind of feel like ass right now, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. These, however, are your valve guide seals. And these go over top of here. So, if you're having problems with smoky exhaust and burning lots of oil, it is very possible that your valve guide seals are leaking because this is what stops your engine from sucking in oils. There's a rubber, rubber ring around there and uh, that is basically acts as a wiper to prevent the oil from leaking down into your cylinder. Now however, of course after time these will wear or if your engine's been sitting for a long time these could dry up and cause grief as well and then what happens then is that uh, the tolerances get a little bit bigger and oil starts passing through and burning giving you the blue exhaust. So those just go on top of there like that tap them down into place and uh, these are your valve keepers well, lie, those are the broken pieces I broke off Let's hold on and those are your valve keepers right there so that's pretty much for this head I kind of found out I'm not really interested in looking into it any further since I've resolved what the issue was with the motor very simple issue I'll cover that, but I'm going to fucking throw everything in a big pile, get rid of the engine block, and 
VTEC. That's right. That's the next engine I'm going to strip down for fun is the VTEC. Alright, I never showed you guys the cylinders, but I'll show you the cylinder now. I cleaned this one up. It's got almost 300,000 kilometers on the cylinder. And you can still see some of the honing marks on it from when the engine was built. That's after 300,000 K. The cylinders are actually in pretty good shape. Uh, even though this engine was maintained very poorly, as you can tell in the bearings, but uh, doesn't look too bad. Alright, I'm gonna leave this video at that. I gotta fucking jabber away quick here because not only do I feel like crap, the fucking battery's almost dead in the camera because I left it on. Oh, beer does wonders to a sore throat, but anyways, from what I concluded from the engine teardown, That's it, fuck, that's it for that one. The shitty part is I'm gonna load it up in the back of my truck along with that VTEC engine and take it to the scrapyard once I'm done. So, the VTEC engine had an engine knock and uh, I'm gonna strip it down and see what we can find in there. Oh, excuse me, the neighbor thought possibly spun a bearing and uh, he said it wasn't even worth fixing, so he said for the price of an engine, same thing, just yank it out, because then you're not dealing with bullshit. So, anyways, I'm going to leave the video at this. I'm going to go inside and pass out. But if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, post them below. Like this video, drink some beer, and I'll fucking talk to you guys later.